Okay, everybody, we're going to start talking about marketing and advertising and look at how our industry is completely integrated in the world of marketing and advertising and talk about some of the business opportunities that exist. Uh, I do believe, you know, this is kind of anecdotal, but I do believe that there are um, a significant, maybe even two thirds or 50% of the opportunities out there for people that have design skills and stuff like that are in marketing and advertising in some form. And considering the, the business climate we're gonna be in for the next few years, I think there's gonna be a lot of marketing and advertising out there trying to get businesses back online. Um, I was thinking about that the other day, just seeing new ads already starting to show up. I don't know if you've noticed them too, but different ads already appearing for um, different companies and how they're dealing with the crisis and so on. So it's, it's just one of those things that you can do from home even and doesn't even have a brick and mortar office sometimes. And a lot of those folks are still working now, even in uh, under the current circumstances. So as we uh, look at these different opportunities, it's, it's kind of a, a thought process of what advertising used to mean and what it means now. Um, in the good old days, advertising was kind of like this. You've got Don Draper, you've got a pitch board, you've got somebody making a presentation and trying to increase, you know, Hershey chocolate sales and using whatever typical 1960s method there was for reaching people, which might've been the TV or some other sort of print advertisement. But there's this long held traditional idea that that's what advertising is. And obviously we know in our world, it's not that anymore. But advertising still has the same goal. And the goal is to reach consumers. You know, we are in a consumer marketplace. So if uh, you're not buying something, you're selling something, or you're promoting something, and that's how our economy works. Um, again, considering the situation we're in right now, I know many of you are still working in retail and have other jobs related to that. And all of us are kind of getting by surviving on supermarkets and other stores still being open. And so that part of commerce is a big deal in keeping those things going and getting shelf space or promoting your product, getting it in front of eyeballs and getting people motivated to, to buy it. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into that, a lot of thought that goes into how to do that. Um, you know, in the good old days, all you had to do was, was put an ad on the TV and that got everybody you wanted to, to get. Everybody was watching TV. So if you paid the right amount of money and got your ad in front of millions of people during the most popular TV show, uh, you were guaranteed sales. It was kind of a, a no brainer. Um, our media marketplace today is, isn't quite the same. Uh, we don't all watch the same stuff and we don't all listen to the same things. We're not all in the same places. And so reaching consumers is a very different process in this kind of um, advertising landscape. And the point of bringing that up is just to say that there are lots of opportunities for us to work in a variety of places. Um, here's an example. What's this? This is a kind of a modern development. We have these social media influencers where it's all about product placement. They find somebody who has a bazillion followers on whatever social media platform. They give them free stuff and they give them money and they say, hey, talk about this on your page. And if you talk about it, then other people are gonna trust you and they're gonna buy it and use it too. Um, we see this all the time, whether we realize it or not, we're being bombarded with product placement. That's just one example of how uh, media marketing actually works today. So how do you get in that or what do you do with that? Or how do you make money doing that? It's a really complicated question. But you do need to get an understanding of what the different media channels are. 
you know, when you think about television, the old television, we used to have, you know, 13 channels and that's all we had to reach people. Well, advertising media channels, there are dozens, hundreds maybe of different types of ways and methods that people are reached with advertising media. And so the question is, okay, if, if I want to reach somebody on TV, what kind of media do I need to make that's going to work on TV? If I'm going to get somebody on social media, um, is it an image? Is it a brief video? Is it a product placement? What is it that actually works in that format? What works on mobile? What still works in print? So there's a lot of data and research that goes into predicting the psychology of consumers and how they actually you know, respond to this type of advertising material. Um, that can be an interesting and, and very instructive thing to study that and figure out what motivates people and how do you design an experience or how do you design a product that's gonna be attractive to people? Um, and that's just that whole swirl of thought process and discussion goes into how do you advertise and promote a brand? Um, you know, and what is a brand and what are the components that make a successful brand and how does it actually uh, compete for market share? And how does it separate itself from the other competitors in the marketplace? Um, for me, working in advertising was always a fun challenge. Thinking through, you know, what is the designer going to want to do? What is the consumer going to want? What is the client going to need? And uh, how do you actually create whatever it is they need? And how is it going to be measured to see if it actually works? So, um, it's an interesting challenge. It's not quite as simple as just sitting down and designing something that looks pretty on InDesign or, or making a fancy logo. Uh, actually, there's a lot of um, thought that goes into a thought and planning that goes into everything that's made. So what are some of the jobs that exist? Well, entry level, something right out of school might be a production artist of some kind. And that's somebody who is kind of an Adobe jockey. You know how to use the software. You know what you're doing. And uh, what you're able to create are multimedia ads. Maybe you can process photos. You can retouch images. Uh, you're helpful on a photo shoot or a video shoot. Maybe even uh, produce, help produce scripts. You know, you're just there as an assistant working for a design team or an art director or someone else, some other creative on the team. And uh, these kind of positions are, are out there and you can find them, like I said, right out of school. You know, a little higher up might be a graphic designer, somebody who has a few years of experience actually working and creating stuff. Um, very comfortable in the Adobe programs. And, uh, you know, your skill and your ability are really in demand. Um, but you might also work in print, you might work on, on digital, you might work on the web, you might work in animation or motion graphics. So this kind of a designer probably wears a lot of different hats and can do a lot of different things. Um, then you might be somebody who specializes in some sort of media animation or motion graphics. I think this is gonna become even more important as things move online and as the internet changes. It seems like what gets the most attention nowadays are quick, short video clips. Uh, so being able to produce and edit something like that is going to be a skill in demand, I believe, as well. And there are all kinds of tools available for that. So any experience you can get in After Effects or Adobe Premiere and things like that are going to be helpful uh, in the long run. Um, now, if you don't consider yourself a creative person, there are opportunities for you too. Um, depending on what part of the, the industry you wanna pick, printing is still a very important part of marketing and advertising. Um, it, it, if it wasn't, we wouldn't still get all this junk mail, <laughs> right? It obviously works because we still get it. And um, it has to be targeted and it has to be sent to the right people, but the people who print it, the people who put it together, the people who make it, fabricate it, uh, are in demand. And so that if you don't feel creative, particularly creative, you don't wanna work on that side of the, uh, the equation, 
there certainly are opportunities for you to work in a print shop as a as a tech uh, or as you know some sort of a, a worker bee producing making or manufacturing stuff um, just as a side note I remember going on a tour a tour with uh, Gary Sellers class maybe two years ago we went to a place called Ron pack in Ontario and they happened to print all of the fast food materials for um, in and out and Carl's Jr. and Taco Bell. And I remember the, the tour guide, the sales rep telling us that, you know, no matter what is going on in the economy, our business is booming. So we are always busy. You, people always need bags. <laughs> they always need fast food packages. They always, you're always going to need promotional flyers. All the things that go into advertising that fast food restaurant business, they run 24 seven. And so again, it's just one example of how printing is, is a really important part of marketing and advertising. Um, beyond that, there are other jobs uh, in the field of marketing advertising that don't really have anything to do with creativity as much as they have to do with people skills. And one of the reasons I bring this up is when you're working as a designer or a creative, uh, you're paid by the hour or you're paid by the project. And when your hours are done, you're done. Or when your project is done, you're finished. But people figure out right away that if, if you want to accumulate wealth or you want to build a, um, a more successful business, you need to add things that are not tied to the hours you work in the day. And media sales is definitely one of those that, that is out there. Um, because those sales are on commission. So let's say an advertising rep sells, I'm just going to make up something. They sell a radio advertisement for, for a radio. Well, that might cost, you know, $20,000 to, to play that radio ad on that uh, channel over and over again. Well, the sales rep, they get a piece of that sale, whatever it is, might be a couple thousand dollars. They might get 5% um, or 10% of the sale for the company because they work on commission. Well, that doesn't limit them to how many hours they have in the day. It's just limited on how many things they sell. And so uh, there are a lot of aspects of this business where people are making money, um, not because of the hours they put in, but because of the quality of what they sell to the customer. This also works in, in printing as well, where let's say you're, you're producing an object for someone and uh, you get to mark up or get get a commission based on how much volume you've sold. Um, so again, I just bring that up as, as another way of looking at the business opportunities that exist in uh, marketing and advertising because there are lots of extra things out there that you can add to your income that maybe you wouldn't think of right off because the creative jobs are the ones that are the most exciting and maybe the most attractive. But um, for the long run as a career, uh, they, they may not be as satisfying or at least financially satisfying. Um, in my own personal experience, I've, I've worked with a number of people that we all started out as designers or, or copywriters or editors. And over time, um, many of those friends of mine have gone on to start their own companies be, just because of this fact that they realize that I'm going to tap out at how much I can make per, per hour so why don't I form my own little company and start adding value to what I actually do, partnering with other friends and, and making a more expanded business for myself. So just bring that up again as, a, as an idea to think of as something as uh, opportunities for, for you to consider when looking at marketing and advertising. Um, all right, so I'm gonna pause.